welcome the LSB Feasters Radio Channel and Travel Corner, where we keep great radio from the past alive. And today, it's legendary WLS Chicago. What a great radio station this was. People in the Midwest loved it. And WLS had so many legendary personalities that worked there over the years. Uh, John Records Landecker, Fred Winston, uh, Tommy Edwards, Jeff Davis, and many, many others. But for many WLS fans, there was only one jock that had his name above all the others, and that was the super jock, Uncle Lair. Yes, the one and only Larry Lujak. Larry Lujak was actually on the air in Seattle. And in 1967, he left KJR Seattle and took over the evening shift at WCFL Chicago, beginning a relationship with the Midwest that would last for decades. Larry was crusty. He was cantankerous. He was ornery. And Chicago loved it. Lujak's actually said to have influenced many current day radio personalities like Rush Limbaugh and Howard Stern. For several years, Larry bounced back and forth between WCFL and WLS, but it was in 1976 when he made WLS his home, and he spent many years waking Chicago until 1987 when he moved to New Mexico. Larry was inducted into the Radio Hall of Fame in 2004, and around 2000 he actually returned to radio in Chicago for a while at WRLL playing oldies. He was one of a kind, and if you've never heard him, here's your opportunity. Uh, if you like what you hear, feel free to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel too if you like, and after you do, smack that bell. And you will be notified whenever we post anything new. All right, let's go back to the 1970s with Super Jock Larry Lujak on 89 WLS Chicago. Time is 811. Larry Lujak, Larry Lujak, Larry Lujak, Larry Lujak, Super Jock. I mentioned before, I letter today is just one of the dumbest things I've ever found in my mailbox. The entire WLS staff uh, today is panic-stricken because we are expecting a visit today from a very important person. Network Brass uh, from New York. And I come to work this morning and I find the following letter in my mailbox, which was a copy of this letter was given to all members of our staff from WLS administration and reads as follows. The president of ABC Radio, Mr. Hal Neal, will be with us all day, Wednesday, August 31st. This is his first visit since the renovation has been completed and there are no more excuses for unnecessary messes and untidiness now. Please, not that I would have to remind you but have your work area in mint visual condition before he arrives. Your efforts are much appreciated, so forth and so on. And it says here, department heads and sales executives are reminded of the reception afterwards. Guess disc jockeys don't get to go to the reception. We're not invited. That, sh that shows you what a phony uh, place this is. Um, you know, Jeff Hendricks between newscasts has been in the newsroom spit shining his shoes. I think when uh, Mr. Neal comes today, I'm going to show him this memo and say, hey, they cleaned up for you. Other Normally it looks like a garbage dump around here. Give you an idea of how panic-stricken everybody around here is today. See, from the control room here, I have a clear view of the main entrance to the station. For some reason, everybody is showing up on time for work today or even early. For instance, our general manager, that's our current general manager. Of course, when I take over, he'll be the former general manager. Uh, normally, he does not roll in here until uh, 1 or 2 in the afternoon, plays golf every morning. That's when he shows up at all. Now, I haven't even seen him around here in the last couple of days. Today, he walked into the station at 7.30 sharp. I met Mr. Neal many years ago when I worked uh, here at WLS before. I don't think he likes me. 
That was, I don't know, about seven, eight years ago. Um, well, I was kind of rude and snotty to him because at that time he was just a minor, uh, I don't know what his title was, but how did I know he was going to be important someday? How did I know he was going to become president of a whole uh, thing here? Boy, I blew it there. What I am really hoping is that, um, you know, I've, I've talked before about how millions of dollars have been spent in modernizing this radio station. I mean, they tore this whole place apart and redid it with all new furniture and equipment. And this place looks like a million bucks or several million bucks. But not one cent, not one penny has been spent for improvements in the men's restroom here at WLS. Uh, rest of the place looks beautiful, very modern, very contemporary. The men's restroom is the same crummy, sleazy looking restroom that it always was. I hope that Mr. Neal, while he is here at our station, has to go to the bathroom. Now, in fact, I'm going to sit around all day and watch, and when he goes in there, um, I'm going to go in with him. Uh, our restroom uh, should be condemned by the Board of Health. I'm going to go in there with him and say, hey, hey, sir, do you believe this? Music Is this Radio WLS. Theaters rated PG, 16 before 10 at WLS. Oh. You know what that means, boys and girls. Once again, it's time for... Oh. Animal Stories with your old Uncle Lair and his friend, Little Tommy. Well, today we've got to hustle right along. <laughs> Can we talk about why? Little Tommy, we don't even have time to tell him why we have to hustle. <laughs> we got, program director says we got three minutes. And so counting. We can't be like Pokey Puppy today. Did you ever hear the story of Pokey Puppy? That's no, but we don't have time. I know. Well, this morning. What boys, do we have to talk about today? This morning, boys and girls and rock and roll mommies, I have a story that happened just the other day on the East Coast in New Jersey where there were hundreds of swimmers out in the surf, and one of the swimmers was a teeny bopper girl who was 16, and she was out playing on her raft about 25 yards from shore, and she heard loud splashes nearby. And at first she didn't see anything, and she wondered what it was, and then about 20 seconds later she saw a fin. <gasps> And the lifeguard started screaming for everybody to get out of the water. Now, what it was, boys and girls, was a seven-foot shark, which was a wounded shark. That's why it was splashing, because it had a big gash on its back. And they thought that that was probably because it had been hit by a boat propeller mm. or something. So anyway, now here comes the part of this story that I don't like, little Tommy. Uh, the lifeguards, there were eight of them, they went out in four boats and attacked the shark with oars. They just mm. beating it on the head and stuff and drove it out into deep water. Now then, the reason, you know, it would be different if the shark had hurt somebody, but the shark was just minding its own business and had not hurt anybody, and it's the shark's home after all. Right. He's you know. just a scavenger of the sea. Right, Uncle Lair? That's right, little Tommy. And, uh, you know, that's the place, boys and girls, that God gave the sharks to live, is in the ocean. Now, the people actually were guests in the shark's home. Now, what rude treatment uh, to give the host. I agree. <laughs> that's right. So, anyway, that's the end of the story. They uh, just beat up the shark with the bats. Is three minutes <laughs> gone yet? Yeah. I keep watching the clock, and I can't concentrate on the story. We're going to talk about bugs sometime oh probably they're not really animals but uh we might do you break do you break for animals well i forgot of course little tommy is not old enough to drive well if you were driving down the sidewalk in your big wheel and you saw a pussycat uh, cross the sidewalk always you... break for animals <laughs> they are our friends 
Well, I think uh, three minutes is just about shot here, so uh, tune in again tomorrow. No, I won't be here tomorrow. Well, yes, I will. I forgot I am working tomorrow morning. Well, we might have animal stories tomorrow, boys and girls. Remember, have your mommies write letters to the program director saying that animal stories should be allowed to be longer. It could have been a lot better today if we'd have had more time, but we were rushed. Had to do kind of a shoddy job.